Do you want to save time studying and get the best test and exam scores possible? Well, if you do, you'll want to avoid certain terrible study techniques and habits that can trick you into thinking you're learning effectively, when in reality, you're just actually wasting your time. So I've spent over 20 years studying for exams and tests during school, med school, and then in work as a surgeon. And it's fair to say I've made my fair share of mistakes in how I've studied along the way. These study mistakes have led me to the point where the habits I use today mean I'm able to learn much more effectively and really quickly. And I've been sharing lots of these evidence-based learning techniques with you on this channel to help you learn how to learn and perform at your best when it matters. So in this video, I'm gonna share some of the worst study mistakes I've made or seen other people make by highlighting 15 terrible study habits to quit so you can avoid these study mistakes and get the best grades possible. One of the worst studying habits that I made when I started medical school was that I'd write down lots and lots of notes on random pieces of paper. I'd write down everything at lectures and would literally transcribe chapters of books as it made me feel like I was being productive. And this is something that loads and loads of people do. They'll head to the library and will write out huge volumes of revision notes or will try and summarize textbooks or the notes they took in class. As I progressed in my own medical career and things got busier with clinical commitments, this just wasn't an efficient way to learn and took up way too much of my time. So when I got to about third year of med school, I made a massive change to my note-taking style that completely revolutionized how I took notes. And basically, what I did was, I just stopped taking notes and I've never taken notes ever again. What I realized was that it was way more effective and efficient to focus on studying past papers and using practice questions, and then really identifying what information was useful and what wasn't. By focusing on these key high yield areas, I massively improved my studying technique and performance. Now, when I was in first year of med school, I actually failed an exam because I had no clue how to learn properly. Probably my worst studying habit that led to this was that when it came to exam time, I was guilty like lots of other people of sitting passively and running my eyes back and forth over every page of my notes and textbooks. Unless you can prove that the material is moving into your brain by recalling the main ideas without looking at that page, rereading is a complete waste of time. This is exactly what I did when I failed an exam in first year, and what happened was although I felt like I'd been productive studying, I couldn't really remember very much when it came to the exam. This is because rereading and highlighting are passive methods of learning, and our brains need to be engaged and active when we're forming memories and learning something. They've been shown to be inferior study techniques in multiple research studies, including that by Jeffrey Karpik, which found that testing yourself just once is more effective and meaningful than rereading a chapter four times. So if you want to get four times more effective at studying, cut out this terrible habit and focus on actively testing yourself. Terrible study habit number three, I see pretty frequently in people learning anything, and that is not setting goals or just setting the wrong goals. What most people tend to do is plan out a study timetable and basically say that if I spend eight hours a day in the library, I'll be able to ace that exam when it comes around. The problem here is that you're focusing on time spent as the main goal rather than on your actual understanding of what you're learning. I used to set goals like reading a textbook chapter in a day, but then I completely changed how I set my learning goals when I needed to study for big postgraduate surgery exams around my day job. And what I did was I'd set myself a number of questions to complete in a day or a week, or I'd set a goal to be able to explain a topic in simple terms and deeply understand it by a set date. All of my goals involve some kind of test to make sure I'm actually learning things, and this is a much better metric to keep you focused and to measure your understanding of a topic than just time spent learning. So the next terrible study habit to avoid sounds fairly crazy, but it's surprising just how many people fall into this bad studying habit by simply underestimating how much hard work it is needed to study and do well at exams or tests. If you think you know a topic well, it can be easy to just skip over it, or if a topic is really hard, you can sometimes trick yourself and say, well, this isn't gonna come up in the exam, so I can skim over it. If something is on the syllabus, it can be tested and may well come up, so you need to learn it. Practical exams in medicine are a great example of this. In professional exams like the MRCS or MRCP, you get tested on your clinical ability by speaking with a patient or performing an exam or procedure. Quite a few people think that as they do these skills every day in their jobs as doctors, there's no need to practice them or they can just practice them a little bit and spend more time on the theory side. The problem is that practical exams are very much like a driving test. What you do in work every day may not be exactly what you need to score specific points at the exam. For example, in real life, 
Even though you should, you probably don't check your mirrors or parallel park like you do when you're being assessed at a driving test. So you need to spend time learning the formal steps that will score you points against the examiner's mark scheme and practice so that you look slick when it matters. The next bad study habit to kick is all about mindset. I still see people on my newsletter or via Instagram and Twitter say that they aren't that clever and they're just not that good at a subject and are going to fail it. This bad habit is called having a fixed mindset where people blame their genetics and intelligence on not being able to learn and they then associate learning as hard work and end up not bothering to study at all. Luckily, Stanford psychology professor Carol Dweck killed off this idea in her book and research into mindset where she talks about the power of having a growth mindset over a fixed mindset. While there are some elements of genetics that play a role in our abilities like intelligence, if you commit to long-term deliberate practice and learn how to study, you'll get better really quickly and probably surpass those who might be more intelligent on say something like an IQ test, but who themselves haven't practiced and don't know how to learn. Highlighting your text can fool your mind into thinking you're putting something into your brain when all you're really doing is moving your hand. A little highlighting here and there is okay, sometimes it can even be helpful in flagging up important points. But if you're using highlighting as a memory tool, make sure that what you mark is also getting into your brain. I remember going to the library with one of my friends who studied geography at university. What he'd do was basically take a textbook and then just read and highlight the actual text itself. When it came to the exam, he went back through and he couldn't find anything or remember anything as he'd highlighted almost every single word in the book. His book and notes were just one giant rainbow of highlight colors where ironically nothing stood out. Now I'm a fan of using mind maps to plan out a curriculum structure, but I won't spend ages procrastinating by using loads of colors on mind maps or notes. A few highlights of keywords or folding over the page in a book to bookmark that page is great when you're priming your knowledge and skimming over a new book to pre-read, but don't overdo it as again, highlighting has been proven to be less effective than self-testing and using active recall. So this bad habit is for anyone learning topics which are equation heavy like maths and physics, and this next terrible study technique to quit is just glancing at a problem solution and thinking you know how to do it. This is one of the worst errors students make when studying. You need to be able to solve a problem step by step without looking at the solution in detail. Using worked examples are really effective ways to reduce our cognitive load and they help us to understand the method of reaching a solution. The problem is that unless you try it yourself or you use a partially completed worked example, you can give yourself a fluency effect where you just superficially know the steps for that worked example rather than being able to apply it yourself in real life without the solution there to guide you. Now on this topic, I've been asked about how you apply encoding and active recall to things like math and physics and any equation based subjects. And I have some great videos on these topics coming out soon. So be sure to hit that subscribe button to find out how to correct this bad habit in a little bit more detail. Now, would you cram at the last minute if you're practicing for a sporting event? Well, your brain is like a muscle. It can handle only a limited amount of exercise on one subject at a time. If you leave things right to the last minute, your learning isn't gonna be effective and your brain won't be able to take advantage of evidence-based study techniques like spaced repetition that require you to come back and retest yourself at set intervals. Now, I was really guilty of cramming in my first year of medical school. I remember one cardiology test I basically just didn't want to revise for and was overconfident. Unfortunately for me, this didn't work out so well as I ended up running on a few hours of sleep as I stayed up all night cramming and then I couldn't actually remember everything as our short-term memories have a very limited capacity. I now always jump into self-testing early, even if I have no idea about what I'm learning, to prime my knowledge and get going early so that I have loads of time to improve. Now to quit the next terrible study technique, you're gonna have to mix up how you study. If you just sit around solving similar problems during your practice, you're not actually preparing for a test. It's like preparing for a big game by just practicing your dribbling. Repeatedly solving problems of the same type that you already know is not challenging your brain. And like any good game, when learning, you need to be testing yourself actively at an appropriate difficulty level. This means that as you start to master topics, you need to challenge yourself with harder questions and also mix up those question types. For example, I'm learning Japanese right now on a variety of language apps. I'll start off by just learning vocab and words using missing word style questions, but then I'll challenge myself to write out sentences and then I'll actually say a phrase. When I next go to Japan, I'll mix things up further by understanding different accents and responding in real time to actually become proficient. So ditch that bad habit of just doing similar easy questions and mix things up. Studying with others is one of the most effective ways to learn anything. Checking your problem solving with friends and quizzing one another on what you know can make learning much more enjoyable, expose flaws in your thinking and deepen your learning. 
But if your joint study sessions turn fun before the work is done, you're wasting your time and you might want to find another study group. Letting study sessions with friends turn into chat sessions is an easy habit to fall into. And you need to kick this terrible studying habit by being laser focused on getting started and sticking to an agenda when you come together as a study group. If you're testing each other, start right away and then block in a time to catch up when you're on a break. Hold each other accountable and try to reduce any group distractions. Now, would you dive into a pool before you knew how to swim? Or even if you could swim, would you dive in without checking the depth of the water? Well, neglecting to read your course curriculum or quickly skim read new content you're learning before you start working on problems is the next terrible study habit to quit that will improve your grades. Lots of people don't bother reading a book's contents page and won't look at an exam syllabus or the mark scheme. The problem here is that if you don't do these things, you'll struggle and waste your time as you won't understand what's relevant when you start to learn. Whatever you're learning, before you begin, take a quick glance over the chapter or section to get a sense of what it's about. Skim through any video or lecture notes and try and get a feel for the important or key concepts and relate these back to what you already know to prime your knowledge. This all helps you to encode more effectively and basically organizes what you're learning and makes things much more relevant and easy to understand. Whatever you're learning, you aren't gonna understand everything on your first pass. Learning is recursive which means we need to go over what we're learning and come at it in different ways to really understand something on our own terms. Whether you're learning in a class or with friends or even by yourself online, the next bad study habit to quit is being too shy to ask for help. Not checking with your teachers or classmates to clear up points of confusion can cause you to waste time for the sake of not wanting to appear like you don't know something. Learning is a journey and it's absolutely fine to ask for help, whether that's online or from friends or in a lecture live. Teachers are used to students asking for guidance. In fact, it's their job to help you. Sometimes you just need things explained in a different way or in more simple terms. And this is where friends and teachers can really help you out. So don't be afraid to ask for help. Now thinking you can learn deeply when you're being constantly distracted is a bad study habit you need to quit right now. Every tiny distraction from an instant message notification or a conversation means you have less brain power to devote to learning. I've been guilty of this too. When I was studying for my surgical exams, I was pretty tired coming to revise after night shifts and busy on-call periods, and I'd look for any excuse or any distraction other than getting down to work. One huge change I made that massively improved my ability to focus and get down to work was to apply what I call the three-second rule. This is where, as soon as the idea of studying pops into my brain, I'll act on it immediately, open my laptop, and get down to work. I'll also use lo-fi music and set a studying routine and keep that phone switched off. I'll be diving more into focus and staying productive in future videos too. One bad study habit that can creep up on learners is not looking after yourself when you're studying. We naturally want to be laser focused on getting through everything we need to learn and pass exams. And it's easy to do at the expense of going to the gym, eating well and getting enough sleep. The problem is that these three things are actually essential for us to learn effectively and consolidate memories. Your brain pieces together problem solving techniques when you sleep, and it also practices and repeats whatever you put in your mind before you go to bed. Prolonged fatigue allows toxins to build up in the brain that actually disrupt the neural connections you need to quickly remember and think. If you don't get a good night's sleep before a test, nothing else will matter. And the same goes for exercise and nutrition. If you aren't fit and healthy, you won't be as effective when learning or on the day of your test. When you're planning out your study sessions, make sure you factor in gym time, food breaks, and set a wind down routine to switch off before going to bed. And now the last terrible study technique to kick is all about letting go of anxiety. Studying, especially around exam time, can be stressful. And if you skip a day or get behind, you can start overthinking about exams and get really stressed. If you do get stressed when studying, it can cause you to procrastinate and not be productive. And if you panic on a test day, you might even flunk the test because of your nerves, even if you know the subject really well. I still get a little bit nervous before I need to give a speech, like my TED talk, but I'm able to manage my nerves by visualizing success, blocking out any negative thoughts, and reminding myself that the exam test or talk isn't such a big deal in the grand scheme of things, and that I've prepared as well as I can in the time frame. So yes, you're gonna get nervous before an exam, but if you can kick overthinking things, take some breaths and focus on doing your best, you'll likely do really well. And that's it folks, those are 15 terrible study habits to quit right now. I hope this gave you some ideas on how you can maybe change up your own study routine 
And I also hope it shows you that even someone like me, who talks about studying and productivity all the time, has made loads of these mistakes in the past. We're all trying to do the best we can in work or at university or in school and be as efficient with our time as possible so that we can, so that we can enjoy things outside of work. Hopefully you don't have all 15 bad study habits but even if you're guilty of slipping into a few from time to time, they're a reminder to focus back on good study techniques and build effective study habits to help you get top grades. Now, do let me know if you have any other bad study habits you'd like to try and kick in the comments below, as I'd love to read them. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and I'll catch you again next time.